Kyle, how are you? Hey, what's up, brother? Thanks for having me on, man. It is a pleasure, and I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. We went a little long there. My apologies, but it's good to have you on the show for the first time. What is it like, Kyle, to get all this praise, to get all this love for a loss? <laughs> well, the loss doesn't taste good, but, uh, you know, my stock has gone up. My fan base has swelled. Um, like you said, the Kohanians that I had, like, got big balls, just went in there, threw it all down the line, and, uh, you know, I have no regrets. I knew uh, the beat was a stud, and I just had to go in the fire and just come forward. And um, win or lose, man, I, I let it all out there. Um, you know, I had a blast, and um, I have no regrets. Could you have ever imagined to get this kind of praise, this kind of love in a fight that, you know, it, it didn't, you know, with all due respect, it wasn't like controversial that he won. It was a pretty clear-cut decision, yet yeah, yeah, yeah. people are, are talking about you just as much as him and, and, and how you fought and how you never backed down. Is that weird? Um, yeah, I guess it's kind of weird. Um, but, you know, again, like, you know, a lot of people turn this opponent down. And, uh, you know, everybody thought I was just going to go in that cage and lay down and be mentally beat and be carried out of that cage in a body bag. And, uh, you know, that wasn't going to be the case. I knew that wasn't the case. And uh, I just had to showcase that, you know, I'm a gritty, tough dude and who's going to bring in as afraid of no one. And, um, you know, I think just the adversity that I encountered in that fight and just to keep coming forward and not quitting and always in the face, in his face. I think a lot of fans took to that and inspired them and uh, may have helped them in their lives in some way. And I think that's where the, the, um, the fans um, connected with me. And, um, you know, they're, they're just like a war. Someone just keep coming forward bloody and also at the same time, just never quit. And I think that's connects with a lot of people. How much did you know about Zabit when you, when you accepted this fight? Because it seemed like they were having a really hard time finding someone to fight him. And then here you are, you come and save the day. Did you know about all the hype surrounding him? I didn't know much about Zabit um, when they offered me him. I just knew that he was a stud. Um, Shelby said the kid's a stud. No joke. Everyone's turning him down. Can't find no one to take the fight. And we we're like, fuck yeah, let's take it. Perfect opportunity to showcase everybody, you know, what I'm about. And um, it's just incredible that w even with the whirlwind of a crazy week that was, how we got bumped up to pay-per-view. Now I just thought it was, you know, it's more eyes, more eyes on me, more eyes on this fight and just um, go out there and um, put on a show. In my mind, I thought I was going to win the fight. I never thought I was going to lose the fight. I never thought I would be in trouble. Um, so, like, even in that fight, I never felt outclassed. I never got hurt. I never felt tired. never felt weak. Um, I always felt like I was a punch, punch away to win the fight. I don't know if it's just me, but in that fight, the whole entire time, I felt like I was in it. I know from an outside perspective, it didn't look that way, but, man, I had a blast in there, and I think everybody could see it. Did you like the role of like, okay, here's this guy that they're they're getting behind. He's from Dagestan, like Habib. He's fighting in Brooklyn. Yeah. And here I am. I'm going to go in and spoil everything. Did you like being like all eyes were on him and you're going to come in and, and ruin everyone's plans? Did yeah, you like yeah. being in that role? I love that role, man. That's just, I love the underdog role. I love being overlooked. It fuels my fire. It helps me train harder and just, just go in there and just prove everything wrong. I don't know what it is. I just like being overlooked, and I like my back against the wall. I perform better that way. I thrive under pressure. And, um, you know, I'm sure I'm going to have even t more tougher matchups coming in the future after this, and I fucking love it. Now that you've been in there with him, is he worthy of the hype? Uh, he's definitely, yeah, I think he's worthy of the hype, man. He's skilled. I'm not going to sugarcoat it anyway. He's skilled. He was poised in there right when I was in that cage, and I could see the way he was backstepping and how fluid he was. I knew I had um, a professional in my hands, and um, I knew I just had to bring it to him. You know, I wasn't afraid at all. Um, I knew, in my mind, like I said, I knew I was going to beat him. It didn't go that way. It didn't happen. I mentally broke him at the end of the third round a little too late. But, you know, if it was a fight to the death or a five-round fight, I felt like I would have took that fight. Well, I was just going to ask you that. You, you think if you had two extra rounds, you're winning that fight? No question. I think I, I would have, definitely, man. Like, his, his skills are sharper than mine, but my— my heart was growing. My mindset was growing. I was furious. I could just feel the momentum changing. I could see him looking at the clock, starting to gas out. Uh, I, I just felt in my mind, if I just had a couple more seconds longer, I would have took that fight. Or at least it would have been even more entertaining. Or I would have yeah. donated more blood. Who knows? But it, it, was, it was a good fight. Is that, is that a, a tough pill to swallow, knowing that in your mind, if you had like a minute left, you could have shocked everyone? Definitely. But, you know, we trained for a three round fight. So, I mean, yeah, I should have I should have put it on even maybe came out a little quicker, a little stronger. I don't know how possibly I could do that. But, um, you know, it sucks to lose. No, sh no way around. it. I'm two and three in the UFC and I need to get back in that win column. So so it comes out afterwards that he injured his hand while while preparing for the fight, warming up backstage. 
Did you notice that yeah. he was not using his right hand as much? Could you tell that he was injured? No, no. I didn't tell he was injured at all, man. And I'm pretty sure he threw that right hand because when I was sticking my face out there, he was trying <laughs> to hit it with his right hand. But, <laughs> um, you know, I, I guess he had a sprain a sprain ligament in his knuckle. But, I mean, we all have shit going on going into the fight. I had a, I had a bunch of shit going on too. But um, I think they're just trying to look away at why he didn't finish me or um, – take me out of the body bag, so to speak. And um, I think they're just trying to f- come with excuses on why he didn't finish me. You know, I'm supposed to be nothing. So you're calling BS on all of this. You're saying this is just an excuse <laughs> because he didn't. Fi- I love that way to turn it around. <laughs> Man, I had a hurt knuckle too. I had a hurt knee. I had hurt neck, everything. I just fucking went out there and put it on the line. For, it, it, let's just say someone was watching that fight for the first time, like watching you in action for the first time, not familiar. Is that the kind of fighter that you usually are, you know, yelling and getting in someone's face and going, you know, balls to the wall, hundred miles an hour? That's who I am as a, a fighter and a person. I'm very intense. Um, you know, everybody tries to slow me down. I just feel like my last couple of performances in the UFC, I've been having tunnel vision, kind of focusing too much on what my opponent's going to do. And if it doesn't present itself, I get like stuck where we didn't really game plan for this kid. We knew he's a stud. We knew, um, you know, in six weeks, my wrestling wouldn't be up to par with his or his striking. So I just knew that I had to just bring it, make it a blood bath, blood bath and just keep coming forward. Um, and, you know, that's what I did. Is that why they call you Crash? <laughs> my grandfather actually gave me that name because I was always getting hurt as a young kid. Always had a cast or a splint or stitches. So every time I entered a room, he'd be like, Kyle Crash Varkniak. Uh, my original name was Killer B when I started getting MMA, but, uh, you know, I made my UFC debut at the U- um, UFC in Boston and uh, B- Ben Saunders was on that card. So out of respect, I went back to my uh, original nickname my grandfather gave me. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's a way cooler nickname than Killer B, in my opinion. Crash, especially, yeah. <laughs> it comes from your grandfather. Now, is this the same grandfather that you tweet his his quote of the day? Is that the same grandfather? Yeah, that's that's the same guy, man. The guy's a Wow. <laughs> That guy's a legend. Yeah, yeah, same guy. He's he is a legend. He's getting some fame. I tell him, I was like, Gramps, you know, you're getting kind of famous on uh, Twitter right now. He's like, Oh, really? <laughs> What's Twitter? <laughs> Does he watch your fights? Oh yeah, man. He's my greatest fan. He's uh, so he was kind of bummed out because um, you know, we're, we're taking care of right now. My grandmother's sick in the hospital right now, so we're taking care of him. Um, and I was on fight pass, and you know, it's hard to get fight pass. He doesn't know how to use all that stuff. So when I got on pay per view, we called him. He was excited. So. You know, we gave him the money to order it, and uh, it was really cool and an honor for my grandfather to, um, you know, actually have to buy a pay-per-view to watch me perform. Wow. And even though I lost, man, it, it was it was awesome. He was so proud. My grandma was proud. My whole family was just happy that, you know, it, I just, on pay-per-view, in front of thousands, maybe millions of people, and just putting all the line, and everybody saw who, saw who I'm really about. And uh, my, cra- you know, Crash, Kyle Bokniak. Oh, oh, sorry. That's funny. You said Crash, and then <laughs> you think Crash at the exact same time. Right, bro? <laughs> it happened. True to the nickname. What's the best piece of advice? Like, what's the best quote that he's given you? Oh, he's got so many. That, uh, he says this thing. There'll be three bangs. You hit me. I hit you. You hit the floor. I love that one. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just he, he has so many of them. So I saw this new, like, segment kind of, like, on Twitter. Like, if he says something hilarious that makes me smile, makes me crack up, I put it on Twitter and everybody's been reacting about it and it's been, it's been awesome. So you just have to follow and you can pick which one you like the best. Fair enough. By the way, your name, Kyle Bokniak, feels like the quintessential Boston name. There's just, like, it's just so perfect, even with the accent. I don't know what it is about it, <laughs> but it's just like, if someone told me where is Kyle Bokniak from, I would have guessed, I would have guessed Boston. I don't know why. I love it. That's awesome, man. It it's just, just rolls fun. off the tongue. It Boston does. Kyle Bogniak. <laughs> it does. What about Joe Rogan saying Zabit when you were standing on the scale? He said, he, like, you look nothing like Zabit. <laughs> did you see that? Or did yeah, you like, hear what it? what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a 6'2 Russian. I'm Kyle Bogniak. <laughs> with, with that hair. Um, so any serious injuries coming off the fight? No, nah, man. I got a couple. I had a little, uh, you probably can't see, but I had a little couple stitches right here under the right eye, left eye. I, have, I had got like five staples in my head. I Whoa. removed. Um, other than that, I'm, you know, I'm fine. Ready to go again. Getting back in the gym at the end of this week and uh, going to start training. And hopefully I get something lined up at the end of, you know, August, September, around that, that, that uh, time frame. Anyone on your mind? <laughs> I know you're going to ask that question. Uh, you know, uh, any, any top talent, anyone who wants to get it, man. I'm not 
particularly about calling people out, but, um, you know, I have tremendous respect for this one guy, Michael Johnson. You know, if he wanted to come back down to 145, you know, and shed some blood in that cage, it would be an honor. I think that would be a perfect matchup. Um, give the fans what they want. We both like to bang, and I think it would be an exciting fight. This is Who quite... Would you the... like to see me fight next? Oh, gosh, you're putting me on the spot? Um, well, I wasn't ready <laughs> to answer this question. I know you don't like to do that. Yeah. I actually I... feel... Could I, could I say, like, I don't think that Yair is going to take the fight against a beat and I don't even know if it makes a lot of yeah. sense. What about Kyle Bokniak versus Yair? Both coming off losses. What do you say? Crazy? That's a good, I like that fight too, but it's, it's still in the same style as the beat. You want to see that again? Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, I do. Actually. I do. Yes, I do. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> you don't want to see it again? It was a lot of fun. Hope, hopefully it means the beat running back again one day. I would okay. love to see that get, fight again. Until then, why not you yeah, versus man. Yair? I like that fight. I like the Michael Johnson fight. Um, who else on my radar? I don't know. That's about it, man. I just I just thought the Michael Johnson fight would be a great fight for the scrap. Sure. Um, you know, he's fought some top-level guys. I think that put me on the map, and a lot of eyeballs would tune in for that one. Now, this is quite the, the life turnaround for you because uh, you, you, you've actually been in jail, right? <laughs> yeah yeah i have so been. things are working out well for you now you've turned your life around kudos to you congratulations right no is that not the right thing to Thanks, say brother. yeah no hell yeah hell yeah no hell yeah definitely you know i went down the, um, the wrong path growing up i come from a small town in gloucester it's either you're an exceptional athlete or you're a drug addict and um you know i was hanging out with the wrong kids and i started going down that wrong path at an early age fresh freshman high school dropout um you know i found myself behind bars at 22 and looked amongst my peers and realized this isn't who I am and I needed to make a change in my life. So when I got out, I went to a wellness school in Connecticut and met a kid who did MMA. So I trained just on Sundays, had my first amateur fight within three months and I won and I was addicted ever since. And, you know, I've been fine. I went to Broadway Jiu-Jitsu, my head coach now, John Clark. I told him, you know, this is what I want to pursue. And he said, let's do it, man. And uh, we gave it a year to turn professional. I did, and I just been on a tear, and got now I'm here, man. So I haven't drank or smoked a cigarette, or done anything in eight years. So, you know, wow. it's kind of a sex, successful story. No matter what happens from here on out, you know, I've I've changed my life and I've gone forward, and I think wow. that relates into my fighting style, the way I look at everything. That is incredible. Congratulations on that. So that was eight years ago that you got out and 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 found MMA. Yep, twenty two. Yep. Yeah, and uh, how long were you in jail for? I was only in jail for a month, but, you know, I did some stupid yeah. crap. And I, I, what I just told you, I explained to the judge, say, listen, I had an epiphany, like a moment of clarity. This isn't who I am. I need to do something with my life. And he believed me. So he gave me five months, uh, five years of probation, drug test every week. Um, and he said, man, if you mess up, you're doing your, your, your max time, no, no good time, which was five years. So I was like, cool. all right, man, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to do it. I promise. So he gave me a chance, gave me an opportunity. He transferred my probation to Hartford, Connecticut. I went to a welding school. I completed it, 15-month welding program, and I transferred my probation back to Massachusetts. I ended up going to Broadway Jiu Jitsu in South Boston, training, little jobs here and there just to pay, uh, make ends meet and continue training and fighting. I completed my five years probation, got my license back, and it's just been one successful thing after another, one little goal, set another goal, set another goal, and now, you know, I'm here now. So, And, and, that's and, about. and could I ask um, what brought you to jail? Uh, you know, just need like, you know, doing drugs, drinking, getting in fights, stealing cars, just adrenaline, wow. junkie, doing dumb shit, man. You know, so like when I drink, when I get that poison in me, I, I don't I just don't think I just do whatever's on my mind. So, you know, it's kind of like I don't have any vices in my life right now. So like when I get a signed contract and I get in that cage, that's my that's my, vice. Yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. time to let the dark side come out. And, um, you know, I'm a kind, loving, respectful person outside. But in that cage, I'm a killer. Wow. And, and initially, I thought that you said a, a wellness center, but you said uh, wellness, right? <laughs> you were a welder? Yeah, I was a welder, yeah. I had a, yeah, I went to a welding school in Hartford, wow. Connecticut. That's where they transferred my probation down there. So I didn't know what to do with my life. I just had to do something. And, um, you know, in my back of my mind, I always wanted to, you know, play some type of sport. I didn't know what it was, whether it's, you know, doing anything, um, pick up football, basketball, whatever. But I had to do something in my life, make some money. And um, being an adult, basically. And uh, that's what I did. And thank God I bumped into someone who did mixed martial arts. And, uh, you know, I just got addicted, joined a gym to stay in shape. And I got my first amateur fight, got my hand raised, 
I was scared as hell, but I got it. I loved it. And I never felt that feeling ever again until I got in the cage, you know, it was kind of like doing that dumb shit when I was a kid drinking, doing dumb stuff. But now, you know, the only thing that really gets me that high is fighting. So that's what I, I love about it. Did you know about MMA prior to meeting this person? Were you a fan at all? No, man. I didn't know what MMA was at all. I didn't follow it. I still really don't follow it. I just train and I just fight, man. <laughs> uh, I had really no idea what it was. Is it possible to even put into words what it's like being in the middle of a cage facing another human being in a sold out arena, fighting on pay-per-view and like yelling like that and, and like going forward and you know you're probably losing the fight, but you don't care and you know that you're fighting an extremely dangerous person, but you don't care. Like what is going on in your in your body and in your mind at that moment? Is it even possible to verbalize that? I I can't verbalize it. I can try. All I know is even though it's the most hostile environment, yet it's the most peaceful. And uh, everything outside of of life, money, relationship issues, stress, problems, whatever, all that goes away. And the only thing you're worrying about is trying to survive. This guy's trying to hurt you. I'm trying to hurt him. I can hear his corner. I can hear my corner. I Everyone's cheering, but none of that really gets to me. It's just me in there, just living in the moment, basically kind of like being in a dream and just having fun and being myself. And I think that shined in that fight, you know, me sticking my tongue out. I couldn't just help that. Me dr drop my hands, let him punch me in the face. I just couldn't help it. It was just who I was and coming forward, win or lose, you know, I was having the time of my life in there and, you know, nothing compares to that. That is a beautiful I don't description. Know I don't know if I'm a... <laughs> no, that is amazing. You, that, that was incredible. You know, it's, I have so much respect for the men and women who compete in this sport at any level. You possess something in your body, in your mind that I, I can never dream of possessing. You're just different kind of cats, and I have so much respect, and it is such an honor to be in contact with you all. And to have it described like that was was a really beautiful way. So uh, kudos to you, my man. And it's always so fun when someone, unfortunately, loses a fight. There's going to be a loser, but you see their stock go up, and you see them get this praise from, you know, like even Rogan afterwards, I saw what he wrote about you on, on Instagram. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. So um, appreciate that and enjoy that, and uh, I look forward to the next one. And I'm happy that your fans... Uh, uh, harass me oh, to get yeah. you on the program because uh, it was <laughs> it was overdue, my man. Uh, congratulations on a great performance, I it, brother. You showed a lot of guts, a lot of heart, and uh, you, you, people like you are what makes the sport so great. So uh, enjoy that, and I look forward to the next one. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me on, man. All right, there he is, Kyle Crash Bokniak.